Hi, uh, welcome to another edition of Jet Setting. Uh, my name is Scott Billick. I'm filming a pick some. Uh, we're joined today by uh, Robbie Stanley. Uh, he is the host of Robbie and Rex Road on 102.5 of the game uh, in Nashville. And obviously a big game between uh, the Winnipeg Jets and the Nashville Predators coming up on Saturday uh, afternoon. And a uh, big game, not just because it's a central division rivalry, but because uh, there's a bit of a race going on uh, in the uh, Western Conference for the final wild card spot right now. Um, Robbie, we've we've seen, it, it's interesting to me, you look at the Nashville Predators, uh, they, they traded Nino Niederreiter to the, to the Winnipeg Jets. It'll be Nino Niederreiter's return to, to Nashville on Saturday and, and traded Matthias Ekholm out to um, Edmonton. And, and so, you know, you look at this team, it's like, okay, well, you know, they're selling off and you kind of throw in the towel, so to speak. Um, and then the Predators are now just four points back to the Jets. Obviously, you know, a tough loss to the Chicago uh, on Thursday night, two to one. Um, could have, you know, because Winnipeg lost uh, to the Boston Bruins, three zip, um, could have just been two points back, but still have whole destiny in their hand with, uh, with uh, the three games in hand. Where, where are the Predators right now? Um, how, how are they feeling about all this? Um, what's, what, what's, uh, what's the vibe, let's say, uh, to steal a word from, from the kids these days? What's the vibe like out there in Nashville? It's an interesting vibe. Yeah, it's uh, – so, I mean, it's been a crazy three, four weeks here. I mean, like you mentioned, Niederreiter got traded, Granlin, Ekholm, Tanner Janot got traded. I mean, they, they went through it, and they, they traded a lot of people. They sold off at the deadline. You know, David Poyle, the general manager, said, you know, this is just where the team is. He, he didn't feel like they were good enough to compete. And since then, they've called up Luke Evangelista and Philip Tomasino and Igor Afanasiev and all these different young guys. And they've come in and they played well. And Tommy Novak has kind of led the way lately, who started the season in Milwaukee, really wasn't even on the radar in training camp. And then he was the leading scorer in the AHL. They brought him up and he's been dynamite ever since. He, I think he's got 28 points in 35 games this year. So, like, he's been, he's been really good. But Really, when the Predators sold off all those guys from the organization standpoint to the fan base, like everybody thought they were done. And everybody thought that it was going to be, you know, could they be bad enough to, to have a decent chance in the lottery? That was kind of the conversation around here. Now, I will say their their schedule lately has not been all that tough from a competition standpoint. And they've been able to take advantage of that with the exception of last night against Chicago. And it's about to it's about to get a whole lot tougher for the Predators here, and they've had a lot of travel lately. So I'm interested to see how this young group can handle that. But they've been rolling off wins. They still have UC Saros. They still have Roman Yossi, and those two guys in particular have been unbelievable. So uh, those two guys are going to give them a chance. But it's a really young group that they've got outside of those two. Yeah, it's interesting because you know I I, I tuned into the last little bit of the the Detroit win um, on I believe it was on Tuesday. Now going back to Tuesday and. That place, the Bridgestone Arena, I've been there. It's uh, it can it can be very very loud. It looked like that place was rocking that night. Like it looked like, you know, the fans were behind it. Like they're really into it. Um, it looked like Roman Yossi had really kind of taken. The, yeah, it, it's just like you know this team sort of is embracing the moment. Um, and and you you sp you just talked about. It. I was going to ask you about. You I mean obviously the strength of schedule is pretty brutal for. For, for, for Nashville, if you're looking at, you know, between the Jets and, and obviously the Calgary Flames were in this kind of race as well. Um, is there belief there? I mean, what's it like in the room right now? Uh, you know, obviously, I, I don't think anybody maybe expects them to, but I mean, I imagine those players expect to, you know, go out there and win every night and give their best. I mean, what, 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 is, the, what, what, what is the expectation within the team right now? Um, how, how is the team kind of feeling about this? Well, it, it's really interesting because the team, I, I kind of feel like, has a chip on their shoulder a little bit. They sold off a lot of pieces like I talked about. Yeah. You know, Philip Forsberg's not playing right now. We'll see if he's back at some point this weekend. Ryan McDonough's hurt right now. they got some veteran guys uh, that are not available right now. And like you said, I mean, if, if you go by the numbers, I, I was looking this morning, depending on what websites you look at, there's any way from like a 13% chance to like an 18% chance that the Predators have to make the playoffs depending on where you're looking. So, I mean, the odds are not in their favor, and I, I don't necessarily think they're a playoff quality team, but I will say they, they've responded really well. Matt Duchesne talked about it a couple of days ago. Everybody's counting them out, and that's a good spot to be in in that locker room. They've got a chip on their shoulder. Now, it's interesting. Like, the fan base, 
the conversation around here really the last couple of years has been the fan base is tired of being just good enough to get in the playoffs, get into the first round, either get waxed in four like they did last year or get beaten six, have a good first round series, and then that's it. That's been – that's the fan base is fed up with that. They've made the playoffs eight years in a row. They've been past the second round one time the year they got to the Stanley Cup final. So the, the, the fan base is, is fed up with that. So the fan base – funnily enough has been re-energized by selling people off and going younger and bringing up some of the, some of the, uh, some of the prospects, but the players in the room, you know, the Roman Yossi's and the UC Saros and Tyson Berry coming over from Edmonton, they believe that they can win and they believe that they can get in the playoffs. So I'm not sure I agree with them, but they've done well so far. And like I said, they've taken advantage of a softer schedule and we'll see now if they have what it takes as the schedule ramps up with Winnipeg coming up this weekend, the Rangers and, They've got Seattle twice, Toronto, Boston coming up. Schedule's about to get a whole lot tougher. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what what gives this team kind of hope against some of these tougher teams? Because you, you know, you look at yeah, they they they've won some games. There, obviously, you know, they beat, you know, but a lot of one goal games are just looking at the schedule that they they grinded out. Uh, let's say, um, you know, what gives this team hope? Is it the young guys? Or do, do you feel? Um, do they feel like? Are these guys really kind of just taking advantage of those opportunities to kind of? you know, maybe cement themselves some spots next year. Right? If it's going to be like, where, 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 where do the players seem to be at with, with, uh, you know, just what they're doing on the ice, what, what's giving hope right now, other than obviously the wins. And I think you won six a lot, or the team's won six, the last 10, uh, four of the last five, if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, there's been that winning feeling, but what, what gives some hope right now that, uh, that maybe they can go into, uh, or they can play Toronto, go into New York, maybe steal a game off the Rangers. I mean, those are, tall order, tall tasks to do, but I mean, is there hope there that, that, that they can do that? I think so, just because, the number one, the young guys have come in and there's been kind of a renewed energy in the locker room that you could sense. Number two, I, I think, you know, given the expectations of the fan base and the organization and everything I talked about, like there's not really a ton of pressure there. Pressure. Like not, nobody really expects the Predators to do anything, and I think that's allowed them to, to be freed up a little bit in, in the way that they play. Now, I will say – they're, they're offensively limited with the lineup they have right now. They're, they're not scoring a lot of goals. They need Philip Forsberg back in a bad way because he's, he's kind of the one guy that they have, at least at forward, that can change the game in an instant. They don't have a whole lot of those guys. And Philip Forsberg, while he's probably not even elite in that category, he can at least do it, and we've seen him do it before. So they need Forsberg back. We know what Roman Yossi can do. You know, Soros, anytime he's in net, he gives you a chance to win. So – the hope comes from all of those things. But I think more than any, anything, it's just, you know, young guys like Luke Evangelista and Philip Tomasino, guys the Predators are really excited about what they can be in the future. They're just kind of freed up right now. And there, there's no real pressure that goes along with that. And I don't know how sustainable that is. I don't know how far that's going to take them. But I do think that's allowed them to play a little bit more of an open game, a little bit more of a speed game. And it hasn't always translated to goals. But those young guys, I think, have come in and they've not been afraid of the moment. And I think that's been pretty encouraging uh, from Predators fans that have watched. Yeah, I know, you know, around here when the Jets lost to the San Jose Sharks a couple of years, it, it's, it's, it's this weird feeling that it, it's almost like you're playing a poker game against somebody who had no idea how to play poker and, and, and yeah. you know how to play poker. And so, like, you don't know how to play that guy because, I mean, th those people are just, they'll just throw all in. You, you have no read on them. And, and, you know, to, to bring it back to hockey, I mean, it's just like, yeah, like you said, I mean, it, it's very much a, um, if you're playing free, you're playing whatever, there's nothing to lose. And for the Jets, so I, mean, I imagine, you know, Saturday, I don't know, what's the talk around there about this game on Saturday um, against the Jets? A matinee game, uh, a potential four-point swing for either team, a big game um, if, if Nashville can win. I imagine if Nashville can eke out a win or, or win whatever way, um, would give them a, a lot of uh, a lot of confidence going forward. But what, what's what, what what's the what's it like right now? Just going into Saturday, what what are you hearing from the team, and 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 how are they kind of I guess you know prepping themselves for 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 this game? Yeah, it's a huge game. I think there's a, there's a lot of excitement there. You know, like you said, if they win in regulation, it's a two point gap between the Jets and the Preds, and the Preds have three games in hand now. Those games in hand are, are coming quickly. They got the Rangers right after that. They, they got a, a lot of games coming up. Uh, obviously, when you play fewer games than anybody else in the West, that means they're all coming quick as, as the season comes to an end here. So I think there's excitement there. Now, I will say they played pretty bad last night against Chicago. They looked like they had basically run into a wall. And 
you know, Chicago wasn't any world beater by any stretch of the imagination last night. It was a pretty sloppy hockey game, if I do say so myself. But the Predators weren't very good. And, you know, the, the, really the last couple of games, they did beat Detroit and they, they lost last night against Chicago. But the last couple of games, they've not played very well. So I think right now the focus is trying to figure out a way to get back to executing on the power play, executing five on five offensively. I said it. I mean, this team's offensively limited, but they can play better than they played the last couple of games offensively. They were really, really on the perimeter basically all night last night against Chicago. And you're not going to be able to do that against Winnipeg and have any hope of scoring with, you know, the, the, the defense and the goaltending that Winnipeg brings to the table. So I think you're going to see an emphasis on the Predators trying to get to the middle of the ice tomorrow which is something that they really struggled with the last couple of times out. Yeah, I just want to ask one more on, on UC Soros. Does he play all 16 games going in the year? Or, I mean, I imagine he's going to play 14 of them, you know, that sort of thing. I mean, we know how good he is. Obviously, an all-star this year um, has had a great numbers on, on a team that, that hasn't, you know, always been, let's say, consistent. Um, where do you see kind of his load uh, – well, I imagine he'll start against the Jets, obviously. But where do you kind of see his kind of load going in down the stretch here? Yeah, I, I think he'll start against the Jets for sure. And and after that, I think it really depends on on how the team does, how they respond. Like one thing last year, they kind of ran him into the ground. I mean, they, they started him a lot. And then, of course, he got hurt at the end of the year, which didn't really have anything to do with wear and tear. It was kind of a freak ankle injury that he had. But he played a lot, and I think they were cognizant of that heading into this year. The other thing is Kevin Lakin and their backups actually been really good. When they, when they signed him from Chicago, my, I was looking around. I was like, what are they doing? I mean, his numbers were terrible last year. The underlying numbers were awful. But he's been great so far this year. And they signed him again to another year extension after this. So I think there's a confidence level there that they've got in their backup goaltending this year that they didn't have a year ago. I would assume you'll see Soros tomorrow. You'll probably see Lankin in on Sunday in New York. And after that, it's, it's just a game-by-game game thing. Like, Soros is a guy that he can handle pretty much whatever workload you throw at him, so they know that in the yeah. back of their mind. But there is a lot of confidence in Lankin in there. So I, I'd say your number's probably about right. I think Soros gets at least 13 or 14 uh, of the final games, games going down the stretch. Awesome. Well, yeah, it should be a you know, hell of a game tomorrow, I imagine. Uh, you know, it's uh, that barn's always rocking. I imagine, you know, given the magnitude of the game, it's not going to be any uh, – any different than than it usually is there at Bridgestone Arena. So uh, yeah, Robbie, I appreciate it. You can catch Robbie's work on on Robbie and Rexode, one hundred two point five, the game uh, in Nashville. Um, appreciate it, man. Uh, thanks for jumping on. Scott, thanks for having me, man. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. That's Jet Setting. Uh, another edition of Jet Setting here uh, for Scott or for Robbie. Uh, I'm Scott. Uh, thanks for watching.